I'm Edie Lush here at the Hub Pavilion in Copenhagen, and we are delighted to be joined this morning by two people. We've got Cynthia Rosenzweig. We've also got Shagun Marotra, and you're from the Climate and Cities Program at Columbia University. So tell me a little bit first about, about um, why you guys are here. We're here because we're organizing researchers from cities all over the world to provide the knowledge for decision makers in cities, which are on the forefront of climate change, to respond to climate change. We're providing, we're helping to provide the knowledge base for cities around the world. Tell me a little bit about some of the findings that your first um, assessment report on climate change in cities. What are some of the things that have um, that you've you've come up with in this report? We have over 80 researchers from over 50 cities that are represented in this. The report is organized uh, by city sectors, uh, ranging from public health, water, electricity, transportation. And we find that urban heat island effects are uh, unique to cities, something that is missing in a lot of the other assessments. And that there's a substantial differential impact on uh, cities that uh, are in the developing world versus developed uh, cities. Mostly a difference between assets and people. So in the north we have w what kind of issues versus in the, in the south? Uh, le contrast Lagos with New York. And Lagos has uh, over 70% of its population in informal settlements. That makes the population extremely vulnerable. Uh, in contrast, New York has... Uh, spends $45 billion each year in its operating budget. Uh, it's got a uh, large asset endowment infrastructure that needs uh, retrofitting. Um, and uh, the city has been leading that work, uh, and Cynthia has been advising on that. Some of our other colleagues have been working on it. Tell me a little bit about um, about how fast this is all happening. We're obviously seeing the effects of climate change already across the globe. What does it what does it sort of mean for the cities that you've been advising and speaking to? One thing that we do is we look at the climate data, the temperature data in every city, and in most of the cities, the temperature trend is already visible in the cities. And so they're already warming. For example, New York is warming faster than the global average. So it's no longer that the cities can say climate change is in the future in 2080s or 2100. It is happening now in the cities. And that's why it's so important for the cities to get going as they are. Their cities are leading on climate change. But it's because they really are both very vulnerable, it's already happening, and at the same time, because cities are responsible for, depending on the uh, estimates, 40 to 80 percent of the emissions of greenhouse gases, they're also going to be the leaders. They have to be the leaders on mitigating as well. So our report handles both both how cities can reduce their greenhouse gas emissions as well as adapt. What are the, some of the things that New York is doing, both on the mitigation, for example, and adaptation side? First on the mitigation side, actually just last week, and by the way, Mayor Bloomberg is arriving today in Copenhagen for the Mayor's Summit, the event that we're participating in as well. And they are leading the United States in terms of city actions by having a, a strong goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And following that goal, they have now just passed in the city council the actual bill that is going to begin in the buildings to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions from our pretty much old building stock that is just leaking CO2 emissions all over the place. So that's on the mitigation side, leading there. But they're also leading on the adaptation side. We've been working with the climate the New York City Climate Change Adaptation Task Force. There are 40 agencies and organizations that run all the critical infrastructure of the city. And it's not just public sector. Now the private sector are coming, uh, are coming on board too. For example, all the telecoms are part of it. All our cell phone providers are there now too. We're providing the scientific knowledge that of what the projections show for the New York City region. And then they are preparing their plan, which is going to come out early next year, on actual beginning to adapt the infrastructure of New York. Just uh, finally, do you think that there, you're, you're coming with a message of hope, or is it a little bit of a, 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 a bit of concern from, from your guys' perspective? 
I think we have a message of hope uh, for two reasons. One, that we think uh, there's substantial existing knowledge that is uh, that can be leveraged for action, and cities are doing it, and uh, nation states uh, seem to be following, and uh, that there is a substantial. Uh, we disaggregate risk into vulnerability, climate hazards, and agency. And there seems to be uh, that this is the moment for agency. Governments are taking a lead, both at the national and local level. And therefore, we have a message of hope. Cynthia and Shagun, thanks very much for coming into the Hub Pavilion here in Copenhagen. And I'm Edie Lash.